All right, good morning. So today we are going to learn about um, inverses. So what does it mean to be an inverse? How do you find the inverse? And if I give you two functions, how can you verify that they are inverses? Um, so I have these notes. There's no way we're going to go through all of them. I will probably skip around. Um, there is part of this that's review, like graphing, that I will probably just briefly touch up on. Let's start with functions that we have spent a lot of time on. And the first function is y equals x squared. And so we know that y equals x squared is a parabola that goes through the origin. And let's just play around with some numbers. So, and if you're confused about f of x, this just means the output. This is the input. So some kids like to think of this as a y. f of x is kind of like a y, it's your output. So if x is zero, zero squared is zero. So I'd get zero, zero. And if you have one, one squared, one times one is one. Same thing with negative one. If you plug negative one times negative one, that's also one. If you plug in two, two squared is four. There's a lot of uh, thunder and lightning outside. I hear it. So remember, it's symmetrical on this side also because negative two squared is also four. Uh, we plug in three, three squared is nine. Symmetrical negative three is also nine. And so when I graph this, remember it makes a nice curved edge right here. It goes up indefinitely on both sides. We spent a long time over these, they're called parabolas. We would say this opens up. Uh, we learn how to factor them, we learn how to solve them. But now, <clears throat> so I've graphed that in black. Now let's talk about square root of x, which we just introduced. So let's go through, and we know that the square root of x is not gonna go anywhere over here because you cannot take the square root of a negative number. We also learn square root looks more like a, a curve. Okay, so the square root of zero is zero. So they share that point in common. The square root of one is one. Um, square root of two is hard to graph. Square root of three is hard to graph. Square root of four is two. And five, six, seven, eight is hard to graph. Square root of nine is three. So the square root function looks like that. Now these are all um, actually what we call inverses, okay? And they're inverses, and I, I guess I would need to put in the other one, but they're inverses because this undoes that. Okay. Um, number two, and actually, I'm going to show you on Desmos real fast. I'm going to plot the same thing in the Desmos. So on Desmos, we have um, f of x equals x squared. That's what I just graphed. And then we're going to plot the inverse. And I always have to look that up. To plot the inverse, if you type x equals f of y, it plots the inverse. And so we had part of the inverse. Um, so when I graph this, all I graphed was this part, but technically we need this part to also be the inverse, okay? On the second problem, um, we had f of x, and you'll have access to Desmos. I'm just trying to shorten the lesson a little bit today. 
f of x equals 2x squared minus 3. The second problem was g of x equals 1 half square root of x plus 3. Okay. So they wanted us to plot both of those on the same graph. Okay. So graphing isn't really where I want to focus my time and energy on with you guys today. We can do this part. You know, some of these notes are review from before. Um, the vertex, so the vertex, uh, square root function. And again, I decided to skip the graphing because we just spent two days on graphing. I want to make sure we go over inverses. So x minus four, that shifts at four to the right and eight up. So my, my initial point is going to be at four, eight. Um, absolute value, we're not going to worry about it, but it's the same thing. The negative one shifts at one to the right. It doesn't go up or down. So it's going to be one, zero. Plus 10 shifts at 10 to the left. And that's all because it doesn't go up and down. So it's negative 10, zero. Square root of X, the negative, all that does is reflect it, but does not change the initial point. So the vertex is going to be 0, 0. Here, it didn't go left or right, but it did go down 7. So my vertex will be 0, negative 7. Here, it got stretched by a factor of 3 vertically. Um, all it did was move to the left 1. So I do negative 1, 0. So that's good review, but I don't want to focus our time and energy on that. So what I do want to focus on how do you find the inverse? Okay, and what I encourage you to do, um, if you type into Desmos, y equals 3x minus 3, and I will show you how to check your answers on these. So y equals 3x minus 3. What does it mean to be an inverse? Well, let's go look at 3x minus 3. on the wrong one. So I'm going to type it in as f of x. f of x equals 3x minus 3. This is a line. You learn about these in probably algebra 1. They have a y-intercept of negative 3 right there. And they have a slope of 3. That means you go up 3 over 1, up 3 over 1. Uh, very, very first introductory thing. So how do you plot the inverse? To plot the inverse, um, you just type in x equals f of y, and that plots the inverse. Now what's going on in an inverse function is the x's and the y's change values, they change places. And so you also learn about geometry, about y equals x, so this line is reflected over y equals x to get this line. Um, long story short, the x's become the y's, the y's become the x's. I don't think Desmos lets you choose points. It's like this point is 6, 3 on the green. So on the red, I'll plot 3, 6, which look, 3, 6. So all you do is you take the x and the y's and you interchange them. Okay, so if I had on the red two, oh, two, three, then on the green, it's going to be three, two. I don't know if I could get that exact. Oh, I saw it. So that's what it means to be an inverse. The X's and the Y's change places. So y equals 3x minus 3. Here's how you find the inverse. You take the x and the y, and you switch the places. So 
So everywhere you see an X, you put a Y. Everywhere you see a Y, you put an X. If this is F of X, you could change that to a Y if you want, and then switch X's and Y's. Just at the end, our notation, and I'll show you, it'll be an F with the negative one. That means inverse. Um, since they didn't tell us that this was a function name, we're not gonna do that on this one. So these two will look different. So X equals three Y minus three, and then you solve for Y. Okay, so solve for Y, I would add three to both sides. And then I get X plus three. equals three Y and then divide by three. And I, I don't like my Y on the, on the right. So it's gonna be Y equals X plus three over three. And I think this is the inverse. So you switch the X's and the Y's, and then you solve for um, Y. Let me just check my answer real fast. I'm definitely gonna be checking my answer as we go. Uh, we had parent-teacher conferences pretty late last night, and so hopefully it's never a bad idea. So we had three X minus three. I'm gonna get rid of this one. And this will plot the inverse for me. I'm gonna get rid of that just for now. But I think the inverse is, and you have to use a different num, uh, name, but you can use Y if you want. I think the inverse is Y equals X plus three divided by three. And let's just see, are they the same? They are the same, they're the same line, see? They're on the same line. Uh, be careful when you're typing in the, the inverse function. Um, if you've used the same letter, it, the computer will get confused. So if you type f of x here, and then you type the inverse again as f of x, the computer will get um, confused. Um, so this will plot the inverse for you. And this, this you could put in as your answer. Now, in order to plot the inverse for you, you must put f of x. And then you put x equals f of y. And then you put what you think your answer is, and then you could just make sure that those are the same thing, which they are. All right, let's do another one. F of X equals X squared. So I would change Y or F of X to Y. Because F of X is just the output, it's just the name of the function. And we're going to switch the X with the Y. So that's X equal to Y squared. And then you're going to solve for Y. Okay, so you're going to take the square root of both sides. I just left room to show the square root. And remember, Anytime you take the square root of both sides, you should do positive and negative. Like if you take the square root of nine, you would say three and negative three. Okay. So square root and square cancel, and I get y equals the positive and negative square root of x. Now, how would I write my answer? This is how you would write your answer for function notation. This. That means inverse. Okay, that's what that symbol means. That means the inverse. So because they were talking about the F function at the end, you should change the Y back to a F of X with an inverse. So I would say F inverse of X. equals positive and negative square root of x. Let's check our work. So my function is f of x equals x squared. I could just leave that alone because I use the same function name. 
if I name that g of x, then I need to put a g there. And I think my function inverse, and notice, we'll take that off. So we have the square root of x, and then we also have the negative square root of x. And that's what I said, positive and negative square root of x. So I had square root of x, and I had negative square root of x. Notice that they're inverses. Just to verify, I'll turn on the inverse, uh, actually. Oh, that's the problem from last time. Okay, bye-bye. So just to verify, look, the inverse is the same thing. I'll get rid of these two. See, they are the same thing. Just to make sure that we are correct. So there's the top of it, there's the bottom of it. And together, they make the inverse. All right, let's do number three. <clears throat> I switched the X with the Y. And notice this is not function notation. So at the end, I do not have to use function notation. So I'll put X and then a Y here. So all I did was interchange the X with the Y. And then I need to solve for Y. So I'll do minus 11 on both sides. And I get X minus 11 equals negative 4 fifths Y. Now this is really going to test, do you understand how to isolate Y? So some kids might struggle with this. But to undo negative 4 fifths, that's times Y. You need to divide by negative four and multiply by five. So you need to multiply by five over negative four. I don't have room right there. <clears throat> so these and these will cancel. And then, mm, now I have, five x minus 11 over negative four. I know you can't see. And then you might, some people might leave it like that. Some people might distribute. So it's hard to tell you which one people would do. I'm gonna say, go ahead and distribute. So that'd be five x minus 55. is equal to my y. So this is my inverse. That's part of why we use function notation because this symbol says this is my inverse. Otherwise we have to write down inverse. So it just saves time and it looks nicer. But let's just double check that these two are inverses. Let me get rid of these. I don't accidentally look at those again. All right. The first function was negative four fifths x plus 11. It went ahead and plotted my inverse for me. That is the inverse. Now let's see if I get the same thing. I think, remember, you can't type this in as f of x. I think it's. 5x minus 55 divided by negative 4. Let's see. Let's hope. Ah, that's the same thing. So they are inverses. There, see? So I know I'm right. Let's go on to number four. This is in function notation. Um, just because it's kind of confusing for kids, I would change the f of x to a y. So I would say, okay, this is y equals one half x cubed minus two. I would then interchange the x's and the y's. That's the definition of an, of an inverse. So this would become x 
y becomes x, x becomes y. I then solve for y. So I need to add two to both sides, multiply by two, and then do the cube group. So we'll add two to both sides. We'll then multiply both sides by two. This two and a half cancel. This you could distribute that becomes two X plus four. And then to undo the third power, you do the cube root. And I get y by itself. Okay. And then because we're using function notation, instead of saying this is the inverse, we could use the f inverse x and just say um, change the y to an f inverse of x and say the inverse of x of the function is this. So I would say f inverse of x equals to cube root of 2x plus 4. And I don't have to label inverse because that's what that means. That means, hey, this is the inverse. All right, <clears throat> verify time. Get rid of this and I'll accidentally type, look at that. So the original function was one half x to the third minus two. That was my original function. This is the inverse, the green one. Now let's check my answer. And I'm gonna type it in as y equals, y equals, I think the cube root of x, remember to get cube root of x, you could either go here or you could type in nth, R O O T. And then as soon as I type in a T, it'll make a radical that I could type in a number up there. So I think it's the cube root of 2x plus 4. Uh oh. You can see those are not the same thing. Well, back to the drawing board, I guess. Ah, let's see what someone has to say. I typed the original function. Ah, thank you so much. Yeah, I didn't type that in correctly. One half, thank you so much. All right, let's get rid of those. So there's the original function. Looks like this, cubic, okay. And then here's my inverse. And then just verify that what I typed in is the same. I didn't help either. Oh, I can't type at all today. <laughs> Try again. This is the original function. Yes. This is the inverse. And I think that should be the same as this. Yes, okay. So you have to make sure you type these in correctly. So I know without a doubt that I'm correct. All right. Verify that the functions are inverses. There's two ways to do that. I think I have time to show you both ways want to make sure. Um, the, the probably the easiest way is just to graph it and just make sure that they are inverses on something like Desmos. 
But another way you could do that is um, if you plug one function into the X of the other function, then you should end up with X at the end. So in other words, and this is going to use a lot of function notation that we didn't go into. So what I need to do is I need to take F of G of X. In other words, I'm going to take G of X and plug it into the X. So I'm going to see when I take four times one fourth square root of X minus eight, squared plus eight. So if I simplify this and I end up with just X left over, then they are inverses. And technically I also need to do G of F of X. So I need to plug this also into X. So these take a while to do by hand. Um, let's see. So the square needs to go to the parentheses. I need to do one four squared. That'd be one squared, four squared, be one sixteenth. The square will cancel out the square root. That becomes X minus eight. Something doesn't seem right. Oh, I see. I see what I, no, that's right. Yeah, I don't think these are inverses. I mean, well, it says verify, so I guess they have to be. Let's see, I'll just go with it. It just doesn't seem like it's gonna come out. Uh, and then I'll do 1 16th and then 1 16th. So that'd be 1 16th of X minus and then eight sixteenths. Just distribute it in the one sixteenth. And then I'll go ahead and distribute the four. That'd be four sixteenths, 32 sixteenths. And then 32 over 16 becomes two. That's minus two plus eight, which is six. So I get four sixteenths X. And I said that was negative two plus eight plus six. One fourth X plus six. If I ended up with one fourth X plus six, unless I messed up somewhere, which I hope I didn't. Um, so at this point, I would say, no, they're not inverses because I didn't just get X back. But let me go, let me go plot those and just check our answer. It's a lot easier to check graphically, believe me. So the first function was 4X squared plus 8. We'll get rid of that and this for now. You might be like, where to go? Well, it's eight up. I can't see that high, so I'll go up. And then the inverse looks like that. So let's go see the other one they said was G of X equal one fourth square root of X minus eight. And we can see, and that's good news, um, that no, these are not inverses. Okay. In other words, one fourth square root of X minus eight is not the inverse of four X squared plus eight. They are not inverses. 
So when they said verify that the function's an inverse, mathematically, because I got one fourth x plus 16, if you get just an x at the end and you check it both ways, then it is an inverse. But because I didn't get just back x, I'm gonna say no. These functions are not inverses. We didn't have time to get to these, but uh, you know, like we don't need to do 20 examples to get the point across. Uh, we're not, we don't have time for these, but finding the inverse, remember you just interchange the X and the Y, solve for Y, interchange the X and the Y, solve for Y, interchange the X and the Y, solve for Y, and so on. And then how do you verify that functions are inverses, you plug 2x plus 3 over 5 into the x, and you and then you, you simplify and you should get x. And then you take this, plug into that x, simplify, you should get x. Uh, probably easier just to use Desmos. And since I didn't really teach that, uh, that part very well, for now, if you wanna use Desmos to verify, that's fine, okay? But I, I encourage you to try. Try to plug one function into the other and see if you get X. And then plug the other one in and see if you get X, just try. But because that part I kind of didn't do a very good job on for now, uh, feel free to use Desmos to verify that they're inverses. Other than that, nice seeing you all. Looks like our time's up. Have a good day.